Okay, welcome back to Tef's Travails, everyone. Uh, this week, we are going to be taking a look at my PETA AC1 generator. It's a diesel generator. Uh, and uh, the last time I tried to start it, it wouldn't start. And I suspect there was an issue with the fueling in that the, the tank is quite leaky. All the fuel had leaked out. So perhaps a bit of air has got into the system. I'm just going to try and fire it up now um, and see if it does run. If not, we'll have to... Uh, do a little bit of investigating, but let's get into it. Well, I'll just give you a little walk around the machine here. You've got a homemade starting handle, not homemade by me. Uh, someone's obviously lost it and, and has built that. It's pretty good though. Uh, that's a spring loaded cover, covers up the starting handle port. Red diesel fuel tank there. Uh, you got here. Uh, this, this you're supposed to be able to take out. Uh, so you can drop a little bit of oil directly into the cylinder to increase the compression. Frankly, uh, I've never found it needs any more compression. Um, if anything, it's uh, so difficult to start, it's the other way around. This is your decompression lever. Put that over to, uh, to decompress. Uh, air intake and filter there. Uh, down on this side, you've got the fueling system. Uh, I think that is the, the solenoid and fuel pump. And then up here, underneath this cover, you've got the... Uh, injector, 110 volts on this side. Down here, you got a, a switch uh, to select 110 or 240 as we've done in this situation. And then uh, down here, you got an interesting little thing. It's, it is the dipstick, but it's also a little pipette, an oil dropper, so that you can drop oil into that into that cylinder head. But again, I, I, it doesn't come open, so I don't use it. And you've got a data plate there, you, this chick chucks out 6 horsepower at 3000 RPM. So it's a pretty decent machine. To be honest, I don't know what the electrical output is, because uh, that data plate's gone. But it's been, it's been enough for what I need. Um, the, um, the, the cradle and wheels uh, were of my own design, uh, because it it's very heavy, this system, and it needs a good, solid cradle for it and some heavy duty wheels. And then uh, just underneath there, we welded on <coughs> some uh, some small uh, sort of domestic wheels. Uh, it doesn't run on those. Um, I put on a, a, a large pair of heavy duty sort of scaffold pole handles on here when I want to move it around. That's just for for moving it back under the bench where it's stored. All right, let's try and get it running. When I start cranking it, you should be able to hear a little squeaking sound after a couple of revolutions. That's the fuel pump kicking in. So if we hear that, we're halfway there. Um, when it does start, you, you won't be able to hear anything other than the, the engine because it's pretty loud, but it should go through a sort of uh, st self stabilization test where the, the revs sort of fluctuate up and down and then it will stabilize. Let's give it a go. Okay, absolutely nothing wrong with that machine there. Uh, that fired up pretty much first turn uh, and uh, chucks out a decent amount of power. Certainly enough to run the drill and everything else I've ever tried to do for it. Um, the only reason I'm testing this today is last night we had a power cut and uh, half the street without electricity. Uh, it looks like we won't be. 
Well, I'm quite pleased with how that went. I honestly thought we were going to have to start cracking fuel lines at the various junctions and unions and, and bleeding out the air. <clears throat> but it, it would appear that the extra fuel I put in managed to find its way through somehow. Um, so thank you guys for coming along, watching a bit of Tef's Travails. And I will uh, play you out to the soundtrack of classic British engineering. <laughs>